wonder hussy here in an undisclosed location. We'll just call it somewhere in the Eastern Sierra at, well, at a place I had pinned on my map. Uh, I've been trying to get here for a while now, but it's one of those places you really can't get to in the winter because it's way up in the mountains. And the, well, you know how the Sierras are, they get covered in snow. So here it is, uh, July 6th, and I happen to sort of be in the area, sort of just cruising around the Sierra, enjoying the beautiful summer weather, and I decided might as well try and check this place out now. Why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. <laughs> this road coming up here was so gnarly in parts that I almost thought I was gonna have to turn around. But the good news is I made it, and I'm finally here at this site which is, you probably guessed it by now, a cabin. Now, as usual, I'm not gonna say the name of the cabin or give you any identifying information about it other than that it's in the Eastern Sierra and it's really hard to get to. But let me show you something before we go in. Look at the friggin' surroundings. I mean, look at this friggin' canyon we're in. It's absolutely beautiful, gorgeous pine forest, lots of aspen trees and it's right across the road from this beautiful little creek. Look at this creek. Friggin' crystal clear mountain spring water. Snow melt. Feels amazing. Okay, you can see I parked my rig right out front there uh, by the front door, the front porch, this little picnic table. Then there's a big kind of a flat area here where if you had a bunch of friends with you, people could set up tents or just park their rigs. And it looks like there's an old grate here that they pro people have probably used for uh, barbecuing. Matter of fact, there's a grill there too. And it looks like that probably comes in real handy here on this awesome stone fire pit. Uh-oh, and then look here. Someone left a bottle of Proper 12 Triple Distilled Irish Whiskey. Hmm, I've never heard of this brand of whiskey. And to be honest, I'm really not much of a whiskey drinker, but Golly, I don't know if you watched that video I made where I went to, I don't even remember what I called it, High Desert Homestead or something. I went to a desert cabin that someone had left a bottle of Fireball in and I took a nip of that because gosh, it just seemed rude not to. And well, I'm still alive, so I might have to take a nip of this whiskey here before I leave too. Oh wait, actually, before we go inside the cabin, let's just look around the grounds here. I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of considering spending the night up here. You know, I'm camping out. Uh, so I might as well. It looks like a pretty nice place. I mean, there's no cell signal up here, but there's, there's really no cell signal anywhere in the area anyways. So I don't see why not. I seriously doubt anyone's going to come up that road this late in the day and crash my party. But I don't know, man. It's just something sort of... Well, I got this... I have this sort of eerie feeling. On the drive up, the wind was coming down out of Sierra towards me, blowing up these kind of creepy dust devils. And then of course there's all these aspen trees. When the wind goes through those, it makes this kind of spooky sound. And plus like, well, I mean, as cute as it is, it does kind of like your prototypical haunted house in the woods type cabin. Hmm, I don't know if I have the cojones to stay in this cabin alone by myself, but who knows? Maybe when I get inside, it'll be so nice that it'll make the decision for me. It looks like there's some kind of little path here, stone footpath that leads up well, it dead ends, but it dead ends at what looks to be a grave. Look at that. I mean, it's a very rudimentary grave, but that's a grave. Yikes, hopefully it's just somebody's dog buried there. <laughs> Not a person. Not a, a, a YouTuber who thought she might spend the night in this cabin by herself <laughs> and then ended up buried on the ground. Uh, anyways, plenty of firewood laid in, I'll say that. Oh man, this place looks like it's going to be cool. Well, let's see if the interior bears that out. Someone has written right here next to the door, howdy dude, leave this awesome place better than you found it one small act at a time. And then look at this. It's carved into the, the front steps, the elevation, 8,200 feet. I told you, man, we are up in the friggin' mountains. Let's open the door, man. I'm really curious about this place. Ooh, are you ready? Oh my god, the front porch is real cozy. Look at this. More firewood laid in. There's a little oil lamp, a bunch of camp chairs, odds and ends that you need for a nice uh, campfire. And then too, there's a ton of graffiti all over the walls from people who have stayed here over the years, which is cool. I don't see any super recent dates. Let's 
2002. Holy cow, people have been coming here for a long time. Oh wait, look at this. I don't know if this is legit, but it looks, it looks like somebody named Bill Williams was here in 1958. I mean, that looks like old-timey handwriting, too, so... Gosh, who knows? That could be real. Okay, well, enough beating around the old bush. Let's go in this cabin and see if it's nice enough to spend the night in. Oh, well, first of all, the door is pretty friggin' nice. It's got a glass pane in it, and it's totally uh, windproof, weatherproof, solid. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. This is cute as can be. Okay, so we're going to start here in the doorway. Uh, there's a table here to the left as soon as we walk in. There's a, a, like a cooler and some kind of chest underneath. We'll look inside those. A really cool, looks like a Sharpie drawing of this cabin. Oh my goodness, that is, that's cool, man. That's a beautiful uh, Sharpie drawing, love that. It reminds me, my dad used to do a lot of pen and ink drawings. It reminds me of his style. And then there's a shelf above the table with a bunch of just odds and ends laid in some Starbucks instant mocha packets. Yummy. Bullets, cigarettes. Oh, some uh, shotgun shells. Ziploc bag with some towels in it. You know, the usual kind of odds and ends that you find in a place like this. And then on the wall, hanging above the table, here's another really cool piece of art. It's like a painting of some deer in the area done by Lois Stevens. Lois, if you're watching this, I'm a fan. I love that. American flags. Oh, look at this cool, uh, it's an old frying pan that's been turned into a clock. Okay, I'm guessing these are the log books. So there are plenty of log books, no need to write on the walls, although apparently that's the custom in here too. People just love to write on the walls. I'll check the uh, trail register log book later and I'll add my name, but first let's keep looking around here. Oh, there's a little sign here on the wall behind these pots. Remove all trash, do not leave any fruits or veggies. This brings bears and other animals that destroy the property. If you leave anything not in containers, you will sleep with rats, rodents, skunks, and God knows what else. Beware of super creepy late night scratching sounds. Ah! Okay, yikes. Bears and super creepy late night scratching sounds. Hmm, this cabin is not selling itself very well. Uh, I forgot, I said we were gonna look at these. These things under the table is a cooler and an old trunk. Let's see, what could be in this old trunk? Uh, oh, toilet paper. Well, that's useful, especially considering the shortage we just had in the friggin' coronavirus pandemic. And then this old cooler, I'm gonna guess it's probably full of food. Oh, look, cutlery, plates, forks and knives. Oh, like some cheese crackers. Aw, nice. Oh, well, here's some pantry stuff. There's, these corner shelves here, there's actually quite a bit of food here. Let's see. Oh, it looks like there's some Seagram's. If I don't want to drink that Irish whiskey, I could try the American blended whiskey. And then, oh, lots of bug spray, because it probably gets real buggy up here. A few canned goods, some chicken, salmon. <laughs> Down on this next shelf, we got peanut butter, bottled water, applesauce, cranberry jelly, green beans, fruit cocktail, steak and vegetable soup. Holy cow, man, I feel like you could really make an awesome meal just based off of the stuff in here. Now that I think about it, that'd be an awesome idea for a reality show or a YouTube channel. Like, go to all these uh, volunteer cabins and using only the ingredients at hand in that particular cabin, you have to cook a meal. <laughs> I, I have a friend who could probably whip up something really good out of these odds and ends. And I'm sure you all know somebody like that too. You know, there's always that one person that just knows how to make, uh, well, a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> Oh, look at this cool old box. Now, what do you suppose is in here? Oh, it's a sponge and some papers. That's like an old jewelry box. I wonder what these papers say. Oh, it just looks like a scorecard for a game. Somebody was playing a game and kept their points. Boring! Man, from the looks of this box, I thought I was gonna find the Fen treasure in here. That was kind of a disappointment. Oh well, someone had a fun time playing bridge or whatever it was. Down here we got mothballs. Oh, pet food, there's even dog and cat food. Like some off is gonna bring their cat with them up here, you never know. <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome, actually. Some uh, pots for making coffee. It's a breeding material. Summit racing equipment, you get it all. Ooh, yeah, if I stay here, I'm definitely gonna be doing some quality reading in that. Citronella, keep the bugs away. Oh, chainsaw lube, nice, good to have. 
Oh, and then look up here above the window, which by the way, the window has really cute little red and white check curtains over it. But above the window, these look like they might have been, oh, this might have been a guy who used to come up here, Dave. Dave Salerno, a man who loved his ATV. Boy, I'm telling you, you almost needed an ATV to get up that road in some parts, and at certain times of the year, you probably would. But fortunately for me, I've got a Toyota 4Runner and the skills to operate it. And I didn't even have to go into four low, by golly, nor did I have to use my rear locker. I just put it in four wheel drive and crawled up nice and slow, you know, chose my line properly, and well, I made it all in one piece. Okay, and here's the little wood burning stove. Real cute. Look at that, you could have a nice toasty fire in here at night. Lots of graffiti on the wall behind it, including look. See, I told you we're in the Eastern Sierra. There's a sign for Carson Valley ATV, Nevada 395. That's the highway that runs through the Eastern Sierra and it is beautiful. Okay, so that was the front room. And as you can see, the windows are, oh, is that glass or plexiglass? I think that's actually glass, oh my goodness. Wow, well the windows are intact, the door's intact, the ceiling looks, well there's a hole there, but it looks pretty good. And the floor is in great condition. So this is a pretty solid little cabin. I mean, you can see the, I don't know the history of it when it was built, but you can see the framing. Things were done properly whenever they built it. Okay, now let's go into this bedroom. <laughs> Now this is, you know, ideally in a situation like this, you wanna have a group of friends with you. So there's two bunks there and then one big one here, which ideally the bunk should have Larry and my sister and Jessica, you know, all my off-roading buddies who, well, unfortunately aren't with me right now. The only people I have with me tonight are me, myself, and I. And to be honest, that's some of the best company I've found, so I have more fun that way. Anyway, these are just bare bunks, so you have to bring your own sleeping pad. <laughs> this is creepy sort of bare rope hanging from the ceiling to hang your lantern. Oh, there's a couple holes in the ceiling here too that I suppose creepy crawlers might come out of. But I don't know, all things considered, you could uh, sleep pretty comfortable here. Oh, this is full of uh, tea light candles, it's cool. Be nice and cozy in here by candlelight. Okay, and then there's there are some shelves up here. Oh, reading material. Yeah, there was no books in the other room. I was wondering. What do we have in here? Huh? A selection. All things bright and beautiful. <laughs> the women's room. Huh. Oh, the mind of Christ. Oh, look at this one. Live forever. Must be religious. You can live forever in paradise on earth. Uh, wait a minute, isn't that where I am right now? <laughs> okay, well, hmm, that's the cabin, and it is really cute, and it is really cozy. So now I gotta decide if I wanna spend the night up here all by myself. <laughs> hmm, okay, so cons to staying the night at this cabin are, it's kinda creepy, there's no cell signal and I'm all alone. So it's not as fun as being with my friends. Pros to staying the night in this cabin are, I need a place to camp for the night anyways. It would be pretty cozy to have a little fire in that wood burning stove. And well, I do need to do some editing and I could use that table in there to set my laptop on like a desk and do some offline editing. Hmm, well, maybe I should take a nip of this whiskey and it'll help me make my decision. Let's see. Will this be cyanide or will it actually be whiskey? Doesn't smell like cyanide. Ah, definitely tastes like whiskey. Woo. Oh, hold everything. I just spotted the outhouse hidden in the trees and how freaking cute is this. I know, I know, you're probably like, what? how can an outhouse be cute? But they did a really nice job. They cut out that moon. Look how cool even the wood they chose, the colors, the way they put it together. And look at the handle they made for it. I don't know, man. I think this is the cutest outhouse I've ever seen. Let's see how cute it is inside. Well, well, I think the cuteness kind of ends at the door, but you know what? It's an outhouse and it's serviceable. Boy, howdy, that outhouse settles it. I am staying the night in this cabin. Oh, wait. Maybe it's the whiskey kicking in. It's giving me courage. 
I feel like I can't really call myself an outdoors woman nor a badass if I'm scurred to stay the night by myself in a cabin in the middle of nowhere in a forest full of quaking aspen and bears, right? <laughs> I mean, last night I slept in a forest sort of nearby and there was bears there, but you know, I was in my car. Uh, and to be honest, tonight I'll probably sleep in my car as well, just because of my beds already made in the car. And you know, if I have a cozy bed in my car right there, why would I want to go lay on an air pad in a sleeping bag in that room full of scratching, creepy things? You know what I mean? So I think what I'll do is I'll hang out in the cabin all evening and then when it's time for bed, I'll just go get in my car. Oh wait, I just noticed something else we should go check out real quick. Oh, I think this might be some kind of well type setup. I mean, there's a hose that looks like it's coming back from the creek there. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Shut the front door. Do you guys know what this is? <laughs> okay, I just noticed there's like charcoal and stuff under it. So I think you're supposed to, you're meant to make a fire in there underneath that 55 gallon drum, which feeds out into a shower. I guess you could actually take a hot shower here. Uh, you know, I'd have to figure out how to fill that drum with water and then I'd have to build a fire under it. But look, there's even a shower head and where I'm standing, they even kind of like paved a little <laughs> shower floor. Wow, man, that's pretty neat. A hot shower way out here. I don't know, man. I'm a, a fan of a cold plunge myself. Um, well, maybe not right now, but in the morning. Oh yeah, there's like a little pool right there that's probably deep enough to get in and submerge myself for that bracing good morning feeling. Boy, this seems like the kind of creek where bears would come looking for fish, if you know what I mean. I better get out of here. Whew. Let me see how this works. I'm curious. Oh yeah, look, <laughs> there's even like a little fire grate in there. You just put some logs. I guess you'd have to stoke the fire for a while beforehand and get that barrel nice and hot up top. <laughs> and then, well, gosh, how do you, oh, I guess I see what you do. You take the end of the hose and you put it up into that hole there and that'll fill the barrel with water. And then you build the fire in that chamber there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you warm her up. Man, if that doesn't beat all. You know, if I was gonna stay up here for a few days, I might actually take a hot shower, but I was only gonna spend the night, so. That seemed, I mean, to be honest, it does seem like a lot of work to build a fire and heat up that whole thing of water, you know, just for, just for the video. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, ooh, the sun's dropping fast and the forest shadows are gathering. But there's bears looking at me, Sasquatch watching me. All kinds of creepy critters up in them there hills. Woo! I guess I better get myself situated and go hunker down in the cabin for the night. And the first thing I need to do is put on some appropriate cabin attire. Ah, uh, much better. I'm cozier and moreover, well, one simply doesn't stay in a cabin like this without wearing a flannel lumberjack shirt. Plus I got long pants and cozy boots because, whoa, 8,200 feet, it's gonna get chilly up here. Matter of fact, I think I better build a fire in that wood burning stove. Okay, you know what? I thought about making a fire in the stove in there and cooking and hanging out inside, but gosh, this porch is so awesome. And to be honest, the view is so amazing and it smells so good that I don't really wanna sit inside the cabin. So, well, I did kind of cheat. <laughs> I put my uh, Lucy candle lanterns in there to make it look like there is a fire, you know, just give the cozy illusion. And then I did hang these little Christmas lights up over the window just to, you know, give it a little bit of pep in there. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and hang out on the porch. And in fact, I'm gonna cook my dinner outside on the picnic table here because I don't wanna accidentally burn the cabin down. <laughs> I got this cool lighter that one of my viewers sent me. I've never seen anything like this. It's like a, gosh, I don't even know what they call it, but it's like an electrical current lighter. It's cool because uh, it never runs out of butane, you know, or lighter, lighter fluid. Uh, you just charge it with a USB connection. 
plug it in and charge it. It's and it works. Check it out. Like watch it set this dryer lint off. Ha <laughs> ha. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, I'm boiling up some rice and beans. So while those are heating up, I thought I'd just sit right here at this picnic bench in front of this cute little cabin with a glass of wine and enjoy the view. Cheers. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for my dinner to cook is, well, I like to leave something behind when I go to these little cabins, right? So I don't just, you know, like I took a sip of that whiskey, which was very kind of whoever left that behind. But you know, I wanna leave something in exchange, right? So I happen to be on my way back from uh, helping a friend uh, recover from knee surgery, and that friend is a doctor. And well, he gave me a whole bunch of medical supplies randomly that he thought I might need. And well, yeah, they're, they'll come in handy, but I won't need all of them. So I think I'll leave uh, a bunch of them here, like a little first aid kit. I mean, when I say he left me a whole box, <laughs> he gave me a whole box. First of all, there's some um, absorbent pads. I don't know why people would need those here. So probably won't be leaving those. Might not need this IV bag either, but there's all kinds of stuff in here like uh, gauze and oh look a surgical blade and yikes a syringe well maybe I won't leave that I don't know I'll put together something okay awesome I put together a selection of items in this little biohazard ziploc bag and then I'll leave it in the cabin somewhere in case well god forbid somebody gets hurt and there's anybody here who knows what to do to help them okay well I guess I'm just gonna sit here on the porch I covered one of these old chairs with a blanket and well enjoy the beautiful fading daylight out these awesome screened in windows and have my dinner it may not be the ritz but hey it's pretty close <laughs> yum okay while i'm sitting here having my dinner i thought i might as well check out uh the log book the trail register and actually they had notebooks going back all the way to like 1993 I think. I just took the most recent notebook which is proving to be very interesting. Check it out. Okay first of all they chose an excellent spiral notebook with Pamela Anderson from Baywatch. Remember them high leg bathing suits? Woo woo! Remember them bolt-ons? Woo woo! But what's really cool is this whole notebook is dedicated to this guy. Uh, it says, in loving memory of Don Morrison. So basically he was a guy who used to come to this cabin all the time. And the first entry, I think was written by his wife. And it was from July, 2018, a year after he died. They said, she said, today we scattered the ashes of our beloved Don here at the place of so much happiness since 1979. We had many years of camping and fishing here with family and friends. He was a wonderful husband, father, and friend to many. I wish everyone could hear his great laughter. And then if you look at him, I'll bet you anything this dude had an amazing laugh. He just looks like one of those people that was a lot of fun to be around. You know what I mean? Aw, R.I.P. Dawn. I wish I could have known you, but hey man, I guess I'm kind of hanging out with your spirit right now. But then there's some other really interesting uh, entries in here too. Like, look at this one. Uh, Cheryl and Barbara said, great ride in on horses. Wow, can you imagine anything cooler than riding your horse up this canyon and coming to stay at this cabin? I mean, they, I don't think they stayed overnight, so they just had a snack and enjoy the scenery, but how cool would it be to pack all your overnight gear in on horseback and stay here? Ugh, oh, bucket list. And then look at this, there's some entries from January. People actually came up here in the snow. Very cold night, Jeep made it to the last meadow. She's very heavy, so I kept punching through. Whew, I wouldn't wanna ride up that road in the snow. I mean, this guy said more snow, about 14 inches since I was here. But then check this one out snowmobile ride okay wow that's on my bucket list now too how cool would it be to ride a snowmobile up here and stay in the winter i mean man i'm sure it's friggin freezing up here and this cabin as solidly built as it is probably isn't that well insulated so you'd need to use all this firewood that's laid in <laughs> but oh my god how beautiful would that be uh oh look at this entry mushroom dust they didn't sign their name but listen if you're watching this and you're the person who did this, call me. Okay, wow. And it looks like I really did have great timing coming here because there were people here on July 1st, 2020. Second, all these people came here over 4th of July weekend. Tons. 
And I'm the first person. Oh, look, somebody was here yesterday, July 5th. Three, four, five, five people. Yeah, man, nobody was here today. I was the only one. Worked out perfect. Okay, I guess I better write something in here. Okay, wow, it's getting dark, man, but I finished writing my entry. Turned out to be a long one. It's almost nine o'clock, so I guess I should just go ahead and climb in my car and get some sleep. I got ready for bed in the cabin, but like I said, I already had a bed made in my car, so. I don't know, like the thought of sleeping in those hard bunks with that rat for company just didn't seem that appealing. So I'm gonna sleep in my car. I'm right in front of the cabin there, and then I'm gonna get up in the morning and go back in and make some coffee and, well, enjoy some more porch time. But for now, whew, I need to get some Z's. Nighty night. Oh. <laughs> well, I survived my night <laughs> at the cozy yet creepy cabin. <laughs> Sitting here on the old porch, wrapped in my favorite pink blankie, drinking a cup of coffee, trying to psych myself up to do that cold plunge in the creek. Okay. It's time to quit procrastinating and go do this cold plunge. I'm not gonna lie, I really don't feel like doing this. But let's go see where the spot is that I wanna get in. Oh, it's right there. Okay, well, unfortunately for you, YouTube doesn't allow any nudity. So you're gonna have to take my word for it that I'm really doing this and I'll see if I can shoot it in such a way as to not offend YouTube censors. Oh my god. I mean, I only managed to stay underwater for 12 seconds, and that was like, ah! That is snow melt coming from the top of the friggin' Sierras, okay? But now, I feel alive! Alright, securely latching the door behind me and leaving this awesome little cabin. It's a great time. I'm glad I decided to stay the night here. It wasn't spooky at all. I didn't see any bears. I didn't hear any rats, but then again, I did kind of wuss out and sleep in my car. But I feel like I more than made up for that by uh, skinny dipping in that freezing cold stream. So mm, all in all, I still feel like my cojones are about the same size as they were when I got here. But for now, I'm uh, heading down yonder, back down the canyon to see what future adventures await. Never know what I'll get into today, so stay tuned. <laughs>